Good morning. You can't see, but you might be able to hear Willow. She's getting a little ear scratch while we're live. A lot of times she comes up into my bedroom when I'm going to meditate. So, um, my name is Lauren Cercione. If this is your first time catching me, please say hello and let me know that this is your first time. And then if you've been with me for a while, please say hi and let me know if you have any updates, like if you've been working on things. What we're going to do today is a brain and heart coherence meditation, and it's similar to what is going to happen on Sunday at 11, 11 Pacific time. But the difference with Sunday is that the meditation is going to be a little bit different based on the people who are there. So their energy. And then also we're having hot seat coaching, which means we'll be able to talk about some emotions that you have come into contact with. And I'm going to help you strategize how to work with opposite energies to like recalibrate and reshape your body, your mind, your soul, the whole thing. So, okay, good. Willow, just calm down. Um, so what we're going to do is you can watch this replay later. You can do it right now. You can be walking, standing, sitting, you can do whatever you want with your body and just know that everything is going to be absolutely perfect for what you need right now in this moment. So we're going to dive in right away. And I am going to go in and out of having my eyes closed, just depending on what feels natural. And I may or may not have my, my hand on my heart and you can do whatever you want. So as we get into brain and heart coherence breathing, the purpose of doing it is so that we can get the brain and the heart to be in communication. The heart has the strongest electromagnetic signal from any of the organs and your heart will create an energetic field to encompass your brain. So you can think of your heart almost like the hard drive to a computer screen. And so what comes out on the computer screen has to do with the information that's in the hard drive that's stored. Well, your brain in this analogy is the computer screen. So we want to actually give the computer screen, your brain, just your emotional information to work with versus anything that's going on outside of yourself. So when we have brain and heart coherence, you are getting your brain and your heart physically to function together, which then neurologically they're called satellite neurons. They get your whole internal organ system in sync as well. So you're like mechanically turning on all your internal stuff that gets neglected when we're under flight, fight, hide. Like all of our blood goes into our extremities to fight or to hide, like to shrink really small, to fight something or run away, get out of danger really fast. So when we're operating in stress and fight, flight, hide, our organs don't have information, they don't have good hormones and they don't have blood. So when we get brain and heart coherent organ wise, we reset the whole system. Now, energetically, the heart, capital H, is where your divine feminine arguably is. And then your divine masculine is in the, is in the mind. And when we get those to talk together, we're actually tuning into two parts of the Godhead but you're the third part. You are the divine will. You are the Christ. You are what is so special about this entire reality. And you participate in getting your baby daddy and your mama drama on board by breathing. It's your lungs. Ascension wise, do you see what they're doing? So the lungs are going to regulate this relationship between dad and mom. Child is going to regulate the relationship with dad and mom that you're going to manifest wherever you want. Okay, chemical on the inside, vibration on the outside. It's pretty magical, right? Okay, so those are the purposes of brain and heart coherence breathing. So if you're walking, laying down, whatever, I walk with my hand on my heart sometimes. If you put your hand on your heart, you'll be able to focus more of your energy into your heart space. And so we're going to start breathing in for a count of five four, three, two, one, and exhale for five, four, three, two, one. And as you have that slow breath of drawing air in for a count of five, four, three, two, one, 
and exhale for five, four, three, two, one. I want you to think of a memory, something that you've experienced that made you feel love, joy, appreciation, kindness, or care. Like the best experience, best day ever that made you feel from the outside in love, joy, appreciation, kindness, or care. And if you don't have something to think back on, think of a fantasy or think of a movie or a TV show that you've watched that there was love, joy, appreciation, kindness, or care. And sometimes when we're dealing with something really heavy, it's hard to go up to love, joy, and appreciation. But we know what it's like when someone's been kind to us, and we know what it's like when we've taken care of something, like a little human, or an animal, or maybe a bubble bath when you took care of your body. So kindness and care are often easy emotions to evoke on your own. Because if we can feel from our heart, love, joy, appreciation, kindness, care, and we can review in our memory or in our fantasy we will secrete those corresponding molecules of emotion to the vibration of our heart. And now you've just combined your energetic light body and your physical earth body. So focusing on that memory or that fantasy, inhaling slowly for five, four, three, two, one and exhaling for five, four, three, two, and one. I want you to stay in that space, just letting that play in your mind for a few more breaths. I'm gonna give you a minute. Slowly inhaling for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale for five, four, three, two, one. A memory or a fantasy that would make you feel love, joy, appreciation, kindness, or care. So research shows you only have to do this for three minutes to reset your system. Now, your mind might have wandered and you may have felt frustrated or like frustrated with yourself for not being able to like get the imagination. And then you may have actually just created contrast of stored emotions in your body. So the frustration that we have in meditation is often like the door to get in. Because when you're intentional to feel something good, it's energy, the energy has to shift. And if you have low vibe energy, if you have fear, frustration, depression, anxiety, if you have any of those energies that are just stuck in your field, like, like your field is like, looks so many different ways to so many different people. And one of the, the pictures of it is sacred geometry that we're actually this, um, 
it's like we're, we're different holographic prisms, one on top of another, that build reality from, you know, the subatomic parts to a full atom that, you know, presses against other atoms when we feel pressure on our hands. Like, that's really what's happening. Like, you're not actually touching yourself. Bruce Lipton says that you're actually touching subatomic, like, they're not even touching each other. They're pushing against each other. So like, what is this anyway? So if you have this like holographic prism of your light body, that's like a net and someone looks at you in a glaring way, mean eyes, they're sending you energy. And depending on how skilled you are in keeping your field clean, and how skilled you are in being brain and heart coherent where your heart is encapsulating the mind to say actually that energy coming towards me is not emanating from my heart therefore it is not me those trapped emotions that might be in your field are might there might might be what you just uncovered right now so this is where the work is and this is where the hot seat coaching comes in so for the purposes of something that's recorded in one way, whatever came up in your body when you were trying to visualize love, joy, appreciation, kindness, care, that energy that came up is a contrast. And that energy that came up is what is building your now reality, whether it's your life experience, your aesthetics, or your health that energy is the foundation for those three things. So now what the work is, is to recognize that energy, pull it up on the thesaurus, look up what the antonyms are, start to program that energy by secreting those molecules of emotion on purpose, start doing things in your life, you know, even if they're teeny tiny little things that will cause you to feel the opposite emotion of that low one that you just found from the outside in. Because being the one, like in the post I just did, when we're the one, there is no experience. You are a singular occurring event with no positive, no negative. You're just it. So if we take our awareness or our consciousness or our thought process as high up to a God level, of whatever we perceive source energy to be or God to be, if we're one with God and we're not separate, separated by our skin from one another, if we're one with God and don't have the separation, there is no experience. So we're here for the experience of the outside in. So use the experience from the outside in to reprogram your body. Because here in a few minutes of brain and heart coherence in telling your body and telling your heart, what do you want it to feel? You just show, shown light. You just shined light on the negative ones. But if you didn't have the negative ones, you wouldn't have the experience. You might as well have never had a body and that's not what we want. So the missing thing, of people who are teaching the law of attraction and sit back and let things happen and just think and grow rich, the missing thing is our participation in it. So when you, whatever your love, joy, appreciation, kindness, care, memory, or fantasy was, if that's what you would like to experience again from the outside in, and you just found the negative emotion keeping you where you are now, it's not just meditation and self-evoking it like we just did that's gonna get you there. You have to participate because you're the manifestation of mental and emotional state. You have to do work too. So the have to do work too is like, real shit that we don't necessarily always want to do, but it's also how can I put myself into a situation where I can evoke, where I can, st where I can count on the outside is going to stimulate this response in me. So for me, that looked like making walks outside a priority. It meant 
um, cuddling with my dogs a priority. It meant paying attention to how soft my bed sheets were a priority. Like I had to be aware of what I was doing with my body to create love, joy, appreciation, kindness, seemingly from the outside in. So what we're doing is we're changing our thoughts, we're changing our emotions, our energetic state, and we're changing our physical experience because we have to do things in the physical. So you are the most magical piece of this entire equation. You are the most magical piece of this entire equation of life. Your brain, your heart, your lungs <laughs> are the tools within that create your reality. So Sunday, we're going to do this again. The meditation is going to be deeper because I am going to open my field to the participants field and the replay participants field energetically because time doesn't exist in energy. We're going to let the meditation evolve. I'm going to take you way, way far out into the ethers. I'm going to bring you way, way, way deep into your body. You're going to go with it. You're going to allow resistance to happen. You're going to feel your shit. You're going to feel like you failed the meditation. And then we're going to do hot seat coaching. And you're going to tell me what emotion came up for you. And just like we create a plan for muscles or for macros, or for business, we're going to make an energetic plan so that you can build in new energies into your body and your life, let go of the old ones, and then go again. Because it's never, ever, ever going to end. Even when you die, even when you're going through the death portal, it's not going to end. There's always going to be something to expand on because we're in an ever-expanding universe and you are part of the universe, but you're the best. So go love yourself, go enjoy yourself, and I'll see you on Sunday. Direct message me for the link. Oh, it's $111, 111 at 1111 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, and then thank you. She says, thank you so much. Things always click when I hear you explain them. Yay. Thank you for letting me know.